Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit to happen in running this week. This week's stories include ultra runner Kyle Pitari runs a 345 mile, which ultra is promoting low carb aid stations, and what sport Nick Simmons is moving into after his supposed retirement from running. Two time Western States 100 top tenor and runner up at the 2015 Leadville 100, Kyle Pitari of Edgewater, Colorado, made the news this week for his gutsy run on the Lick Skillet Downhill Mile. Kyle was hoping to break four minutes in the mile. The segment he went after drops over 735 feet in one mile downhill on a county road northwest of Boulder, starting at 8,200 feet above sea level. For those of you non-mathematicians out there, that's an average grade of 13.5%. He recorded his run on video and it showed him warming up then taking off for a quad busting three minute, 46 second mile descent. I followed up with Kyle and his flat mile personal best at sea level is a 441, which gives me hope that someday I might even break five minutes in the mile with enough of a downhill shove. Kudos to you, Kyle, for simultaneously inspiring us and making it look easy. The Western States 100 announces a change to their lottery system this week that now features a one-time bypass. We have to come right out and applaud this move by the race, which will now give lottery hopefuls the ability to defer one time for any reason without losing all your lifetime tickets. Prior to this rule, women who went through pregnancy, those with a severe illness, or those deployed overseas had little help if they happened to miss a single qualifying year. We've all heard plenty about the now infamous Barkley marathons, but how about the Baldy marathons? Inspired by the Barkley, the Baldy also is comprised of 20 mile loops and entrants have 60 hours to complete the five loops totaling 100 miles with 50,000 feet of climb over alpine terrain near Mount Baldy in Southern California. According to race founder Aaron Sorensen, no one has yet to finish the 100 miler and just three got the 100K done this year with Ale Escalona coming in first, 33 hours, 27 minutes. The USA Track and Field Mountain Ultra Trail or MUT Council announced the team for the Long Distance Mountain Running Championships, which will be held this June 24th in Poland over a 22.4 mile course with almost 7,000 feet of climb and descent. The ladies US team will have Addie Bracey, Ashley Brasovan, Renee Mativier, Sandy Nypaver, and Catherine Ross on board. For the guys, we'll see Anthony Costales, Joe Gray, Tate Pullman, David Seclair, and Andy Wacker. Quite the stacked teams, I'd have to say. Wish you all the best of luck. We'll have our eyes on you come June. The Hungarian EMU six day race is taking place with Mick Thwaites of Australia leading the field with over 600 kilometers after 94 hours. The leading lady is Charlotte Vassarelli of Canada, currently at 484 kilometers. We'll have final results next week. Mallory Brooks, founder of Spectrum Trail Racing in Texas, reported some trail theft that is quite disturbing if you ask me. She says that at least one aid station set up at Flat Creek Ranch was picked clean of two pop-up tents, food aid station supplies, tablecloths, gels, tailwind, etc. in the middle of the night. Now I've heard and seen of course marking vandalism before, but never aid station thievery. This is crazy if you ask me. Maybe it's time we as race directors set up wildlife cams to help guard our stuff. Or maybe booby traps, or maybe both. A film about Timothy Olsen and Anna Frost's run along the Snowmen Trek in Bhutan, filmed and produced by Ben Clark, hits select US theaters for what looks like a one day showing May 17th. Not sure I'll be able to make this one, so if you go, please send me a review. I'd imagine they will at some point release to the online viewing public, at some point. Nick Simmons, two time Olympian and now CEO of Run Gum, announced he will attempt to become the first human to both have a sub four minute mile and a summit of Mount Everest under his belt. He accomplished the former with a personal best in the mile of 356 and will be attempting the Seven Summits project with an Everest summit attempt on the calendar within the next couple years. Dave Mackey's back in the news this week again with an expanded race schedule announcement for 2018 Dave will be taking on not only the Leadman Challenge this summer, but also MS 50K, Dirty 30, JFK 50, and quite possibly Quad Dipsy later in the year. Oh, and he's also tacking on pacing gigs at both Western and Hard Rock. NBD. 
self-proclaimed ultra race of champions, which has bunny hopped across the US over the past several years, landing back in Virginia as of late, is marketing a new quote unquote low carb aid station at this year's event. Quite an interesting concept. They say they are offering peanut butter and almond wraps, cream cheese, nuts, and cucumber sticks with salt, saying this will lower GI distress. Not 100% sure, but I think that kind of stuff is pretty typical at most ultras. Well, at least the peanut butter, cheese, and bacon. They're off the mainstays at many ultras around the country. I get the whole high carb, low fat thing, but I'm pretty sure even Zach Bitter advocates eating carbs during ultras. If I'm wrong here, please call me out. Appalachian trail record holder, Joe McConney, was at it again, chasing more trail records, this time across the pond in Ireland. Joe went after Ian Keith's Wicklow Round FKT, which is a 100K run with over 6,000 meters of climb along the way tagging 26 peaks. He ended up taking over 40 minutes off the previous best time, finishing in 17 hours, nine minutes, 44 seconds. Think you can work with nine other strangers to cross 2,600 miles of terrain across the Pacific Northwest and into Canada for a chance to split a million dollar prize purse? They may as well have written the description for a summer ultra marathon. 10 lucky or maybe unlucky strangers will have the chance to follow an old fur trade route from Portland to Hudson Bay. Here's a story. A school superintendent was caught defecating near one of his own high school tracks. I get that we all have the occasional issue and need to go off into the woods, but this guy was doing his duty on the daily and in plain sight of hidden cameras, which outed him. And on that note, a quick plug for our first ever line of Outhouse News merchandise. We have a limited run of shirts, hats, and stickers with our show catchphrase, have a shitty week, now available in our online store at runsteep.com. Go snag one while you can. And with that, thanks for tuning in to episode 92 of Outhouse News, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or question or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to directly support this show financially, consider becoming a Patreon supporter of this channel. We just did a big giveaway for all of our Patreon supporters at the $10 per month level. Some of you got this very hat right here. As always, have a pretty week.